You know the rule, quick sip of my herbal life before we get started and give you guys a second to get in here in the room. So you can hear me gulping that shit. Get me nice and worked up, you guys. Little kick of herbal life energy because I need every little bit of energy, right? There's not enough in me. All right, so here we are. Steve says episode number 37. Believe it or not, today you are going to learn how to be happy from an asshole. I'm not telling you who that is. You can figure that part out. Anyway, you know, this is our Facebook Live weekly episode. Steve says every Tuesday we're here to discuss, you know, whatever it is that's on your guys' mind. If you have any questions, you can always email them in, call them in, or just join us live right here each, each and every week. You know what Steve says is all about all the time. It's about adapting and overcoming, becoming a better version of yourself, getting your shit together, stop being a little bitch, and of course, making no excuses. If you have questions, you can put them here in the comments. We'll get to them right as we're going. As we get rolling, you can send them in, call them in, text them in, whatever. Every week, you don't want to miss this. So again, I was telling you this week, as I was telling you in the post earlier today, we're going to discuss the most nasty word in the English language, the F word. We'll get to that later on, the F word. We're going to have fun with that one. Last week, we talked about learning lessons from unlikely sources. We're going to do a quick recap of that. It's going to tie right into what we're talking about today. And then you're going to learn how to be ha- become a happy person from an asshole and learn how to have complete control of everything in your life. All of it ties together. It might not, it's all might not make sense in your head, but it makes sense in my head. And that's all that fucking matters. So we are going to get rolling. But first of all, I want to talk about the, the weekend because this is also going to tie into it. We're going to talk about the weekend later on and your, your, how you spend your weekends and all this other stuff. But the Super Bowl, I want to talk about the Super Bowl for a second. First of all, fuck the Super Bowl. I don't even know who was in the Super Bowl. I don't know who won the Super Bowl. I don't give a shit who's in the Super Bowl. I can't stand people who sit there. And I understand people are sports fans. They have hobbies and this and that. But then when their team loses or their favorite player, you know, doesn't make, you know, screws up in the game or whatever. And they're like upset all the next day or all week. Like, oh my God, I can't believe they're like crushed or devastated. Or their, their favorite fighter got knocked out or something. Their team lost in the Super Bowl or whatever the hell it is. They're crushed and devastated while all those fucking football players, those fuckers are sitting at home making their freaking millions and millions and millions of dollars a year. Guess what? When you're having a hard time at work and you fuck up at work, I guarantee you that motherfucker isn't sitting at home after you had a a fucked up day at work and sitting there all stressed and worried about you, but you're sitting there worried about them. And that all kind of ties in. It all comes full circle what we're talking about today. So we're starting off today with saying, fuck the Super Bowl. It's just an excuse for people to do a bunch of stupid shit when you never watch a football game all year long and then all of a sudden you're wearing jerseys and putting fucking black makeup on your, on your, under your eyes just to go eat some fucking chicken wings. Anyway, that's not what this is about. This is about taking control of your life today. And so today's about taking control and taking control about your life and the things surrounding you, living life on your terms. You know, last week, like I said, we talked about learning from all the people around you and every situation around you and all the situations you find yourself coming across in life and learning something from everyone, everyone you meet, learn something positive from everyone you meet, even if unlikely sources, and learning something from every situation you find yourself in. And, you know, so why not give yourself some more quality content to learn from around you? Even though you can learn from unlikely sources and assholes and douchebags around you, why not give yourself a little more quality content around you to learn from and to learn from those people We're going to, again, get into all this. Control the situations you put yourself into. It's your fucking life, so it's time to take control of it. And we're going to go step by step exactly how to do it. It's fucking simple. It's very simple. So we are going to start off. I told you we're going to get to the F word later. We're going to go with the H word. This one you don't even have to guess because I've already told you it. But you could try to guess it because you probably weren't paying a fucking attention. If you could tell me what that word is. This, and I always give my variations of what the word means, my definition of it, not what you might see right when you first pull something up in like the dictionary. I'm saying what it means to me. This word means content. It means lively. It means thrilled, upbeat, gratified, intoxicated, or blessed, or I said lively. I said lively. Ecstatic basically is what this word means. It's what this is all about. Like I said, the H word, happy, believe it or not. I'm going to fucking show you exactly how you need to be happy because a lot of you people out there are probably miserable fucks and I'm going to help you change all that. 
from someone like me, coming from someone like me, I know that sounds crazy, and you can't believe I'm going to sit here and fucking preach to you about being happy, but that's just the way it is. That's right. This miserable prick standing in front of you that just says fuck this and fuck that is going to teach you how to be fucking happy. That's what we're going to do today. I always tell people that I'm I always tell people I'm one of the happiest people you'll ever meet and they're like bullshit. I never see you smile, I never see you this, you're always fucking pissed off, you're always talking shit, this and that. First of all, I'm talking shit cuz I'm having fun. I love talking shit. It's just fun. I love being sarcastic. If you can't laugh about shit, then you're just a fucking miserable pick. But then smiling, the fucking S word. You know, a smile. Fuck a smile. You don't have to be you don't have to be walking around all day fucking whistling Dixie, skipping to my fucking loo, and wearing a big old fake ass cheeseburger smile on your face all day in order to be happy. It's not necessary. Half the time the motherfucker that's smiling all the time in your face will be the first one that stabs you in the back when you're not when you're least expecting it. Cause pe- people sure people smile when they're happy, but you know what? People also smile when they're sad, they smile when they're scared, they smile when they're nervous, they smile when they're lying or cheating or stealing. People smile if they're fucking killing someone. People fucking smile, 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 smile. And then always say, oh, how come you never smile? How come you never smile? What the fuck does smile mean? Fuck a smile. There's no need to smile. Fuck smiling. I'm gonna, I'm gonna boycott smiling. Screw that. It's bullshit. And also, smiling has nothing to do with happiness. It's, if you just talk, look at all those different, different words I, I told you for happiness. Content, ecstatic, lively, pleasant, pleased, thrills, upbeat, gratified, intoxicated, blessed. If you, you could search, and I searched, I tried to, tr- I tried to prove myself wrong. I played the devil's advocate against myself in my own fucking head with all the people running around in my head, and I tried to prove myself wrong that smiling has nothing to do with happiness. That's what I said, and I was trying to prove myself wrong. I fucking searched and searched and searched in all the diff- dictionaries and definitions and all the writing about smiling and happiness and all this other bullshit, and no dictionary or th- thesaurus. Does the word smile have any association with being happy when it really comes down to it? You can find references to murder closer to happy than you can find references to smiling when it comes to happy. For instance, I'll give you an example. This was literally in one of the... I'm twisting it in my own little way. This was in one of a dictionary's definition of of happy, of a, a way to use the word happy. And smile was in none of their references. I'll tell you in a way that it could be... It was used... Or similarly used like this in an actual dictionary. There was a battlefield full of blood and carnage as the trigger happy marine was mowing down all his fucking enemies. That was, they talked about trigger happy in the dictionary to, to reference the word happy and nothing to do with smiling. So fuck smiling. It doesn't, it's not an indicator of happy because people bullshit with their smiles are usually fake and it usually means something 10 times different than being happy. Well, how does that mean you're happy because you're fucking smiling? It's a fake, it's a facade, it's bullshit. And I'm boycotting it. And that's why you don't see me freaking smiling. There's no mention of smiling anywhere near any forms of happy. So that's the first thing. Next, we're going to get into the two main factors influencing your happiness. And we're going to kind of reverse engineer all this. Who's in here with us? Who's in here? Just checking in to see who's here. Bunch of you freaks are here. So the two main influences factoring your happiness. The first one. It means, I'll, I'll give you the word in a second. You know how I like to play these games in my brain. The first one means either activity or movement or operation or a plan, a process, a reaction, a response, or even a force is what this third one means. And it is action. You need to take action. So again, I said we're going to reverse engineer this to get to the root of where happiness is created and caused. So we're going to work our way back. So it ends, it starts, it ends with action. That's the last step to get to the happiness. So we need to reverse engineer this. Your actual actions end up creating your happiness or fucking misery or whatever direction or whatever fork in the road you're going to take in, in when you're taking action. What you actually do, like physically do, ultimately is what causes your happiness. But it's not what creates it. Like I said, we're going to reverse engineer the steps. So action is the last step. You all know I'm all about taking action. And not just taking any action, but taking massive fucking action. But what you create, what you create causes your actions. You don't just go and do something for no reason. Whether your actions are causing happiness or misery, something causes those actions. And that's what we're going to do is backtrack that. So what's causing you to take action? There's one thing that's causing you to take action. It's otherwise known as acceptance or assumption or conclusion or hope or judgment, impression, or mindset, all fall into the category of belief. 
So what your belief is, is what's going to cause you to take action, which is going to lead to the happiness or your fucked up misery, is what you, your belief is. And if you notice, belief has nothing to do with facts. Just because you, you believe something to be true, doesn't mean it's a fucking fact. So that's the first thing. Your beliefs are what you lead to take an action. But what's going to influence your beliefs? There's two things that are going to influence your beliefs. The first one. So now we had happiness, action, belief. The first thing is your fucking thoughts. Your thoughts or your logic or your understanding, your consideration, your intuition, your you know, paying attention, your judging, perceiving. All other words for thoughts. But again, just like we said with the, with the last word, your thoughts are, are what create your beliefs then your beliefs steer your actions in one direction or another, either positively or as a fucking asshole. But again, if you notice, thoughts also have nothing to do with fact. They might have something to do with your opinion or your logic, but your your logic might just be fucked up. Your opinion might just be a fucking asshole opinion. And it might be skewed by your surroundings is what we're actually going to get into into the next step. Then you're just fucked. You know, we talked about this before, how your thoughts are reality. If you think something to be fucking true, then it is true. So no matter how crazy or demented or fucked up your thoughts are, your thoughts are your own reality. So you need to control your thoughts. Stop being such a negative fucking douchebag. Think fucking positive. Think big. Think how you can make an impact on, on, the, on the community or the world and how you can help someone. Think of how you can find positive side in every situation. Just, just last week, we were figuring out how we could learn something new and positive from every situation and every person you meet. Do the same thing with your thoughts. Find, find the positive side of everything. Your thoughts can be manipulated. They can be altered. They can be changed. They can be fucking corrupted. Your, your thoughts can make you fucking evil or a lying scumbag. Your thoughts can make you a nasty, negative, freaking shithead that no one wants to be around. And that's basically the process that we're at so far. So now our thoughts, we just realize are what are influencing your beliefs. Your beliefs are what's causing you to take action on action is leading to your fucking happiness or misery. But now where do your thoughts come from? Where are your thoughts coming from? I'm going to give you a hint where your thoughts come. It comes from your community, your crowd, the crowd you're in. It comes from the public. It comes from society. It comes from the news. It comes from the masses. It comes from your, the tribe that you associate yourself with, that you have stuff in common with. It comes from your herd. So once again, that, and all those words are actually other words for just the word people. People. That's what's really influencing, mostly influencing your thoughts are the people, the people that you put yourself around. So once again, nothing in there about people is about anything being truthful or right or positive. It's just people. Just because it's saying the masses or community or crowd or commonality, or a tribe, doesn't mean that it's a good crowd. It doesn't mean it's a positive freaking, the positive masses, or good things in common. It just means people. That's all it fucking means. So there's, there's nothing about people that means being right or positive, or always having the answers, or being positive, contributing fucking members of society. It's just people. People can be fucking awesome, or they can be slimy, scumbag freaking snakes. And the people you surround yourself with have the most dynamic influence on your freaking thoughts, which create your beliefs, which steer your freaking actions, which your actions then cause your misery and your freaking happiness or one or the other. Fucking people. Which is why, for the most part, I fucking hate people because that's what they do is, in general, a lot of them are trying to cause you to go towards that path towards the misery and it's being around the right people that are going to help you go towards that the path towards success and your dreams and your goals and your freaking destiny and what happiness is. So this leads us to the F word, the nastiest fucking word in the English language. Who can tell me what the F word is? Can anyone tell me what the F word is? I'm going to give you like two seconds to tell me what the F word is. The nastiest word, one of the most disgusting fucking words in the English language. While you try to figure out what the F word is, I'm going to take a sip of my Herbalife. Unfucking believable that you guys are being taught how to be happy by this fucking weirdo, huh? No one can tell me what the F word is. And, my, and why is a watch talking to me? No one can tell me what the F word is. The nastiest word in the English language. All right, I'll give you some hints since no one guessed it. 
It, this word can mean associate. It can mean ally. It can mean companion, acquaintance, buddy. Who can tell me what the fucking F word is? Anyone? No one can tell me what the F word is. The nastiest word in the English language, the F word, is friends. Friends. Like I just said, associate, ally, companion, acquaintance, buddy. Much like belief and thoughts had nothing to do with truth and reality, the de definition of friend has nothing in there mentioned about loyalty or being positive or anything like that. It's just saying associate, companion, acquaintance, buddy. It doesn't mean that they're good for you. It doesn't mean that they're doing in the same, even trying to help you. It doesn't even mean they're on your same side. Even though ally could be considered another word for friend, it doesn't mean they're, it doesn't, an ally doesn't mean anything. That could flip flop at any fucking second, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that and know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. Who was right? You didn't say friend. Oh, you did say friend, but you said it after I said it. I looked right before I said it and it wasn't there. There must have been some kind of delay or some shit. So, the word friend, the F word, the nastiest word in the English language. So, like I said, this is, this is why I have a, a fucking pit bull on my chest. This is Tyson. Yes, Tyson, it was the name of our dog, who's also the name of our son, because we're just fucking fucked up like that, and that's just the way it is, because it's all about being happy and living life on your terms and doing shit your way. That's what it's all about. That's being happy. Naming your kid and your dog the same thing, that's the fucking, that's like the definition of happy, when you could just do whatever the fuck you want, because you're, it makes you fucking happy, right? So that's why we have this pit bull on here. Nothing more in the you know, nothing more in the world could be more pit or, or more faithful and loyal than the dog. That's why they call a man a dog a man's best friend. And Tyson, this dog, was as faithful and loyal as he can get. He is like the definition of faithful and loyal. So-called friends, they'll they'll turn on you without blinking a fucking eye, without even skipping a heartbeat, without fucking warning, and usually much more viciously and devious than your enemies. Because they've gotten to know you over the time, over the years that they were, you know, buddy fucking buddy with you. And they get to know you and your strengths and your weaknesses and your vulnerabilities. And then you know what? When the time comes, they fucking will strike out against you using all that against you. They're much more vicious than your fucking enemies are. At least an enemy, you're expecting it and ready and willing and accepting of the fact that the battle is brewing and the fucking war is inevitable, inevitable and you're just ready to fucking stomp a mud hole in your enemy's ass. But your friend, the little, you know, friends... Friends will be the ones with those famous S words, the smiles. They're a fucking hundred times worse than your enemies, your, those friends, or at least most of them. They say you're a product of the five people you spend most of your time with. Take a look at the people around you and drop those fucking crabs that are dragging you down and with those bullshit fucking fake ass smiles all the time. So that's, that's, that's the big reverse engineering of how to get to that happiness was you are either in your life going to go towards happiness or towards fucking misery by taking action. Your action is going to be influenced by your beliefs. Your beliefs are going to be created and influenced by your thoughts. And your thoughts are most of the time going to be influenced by the people you surround you with. And the people you surround with are your friends. So that's why I say, fuck those friends. I don't need friends. Can't imagine why I have any friends. Amazing, right? Why no one wants to be friends with me? It's freaking crazy. All right, so since we're on a, you know, giving out, you know, fuck this and fuck that, Forrest Gump, fuck Forrest Gump. And now you guys are like, what the fuck is he talking about now? What does Forrest Gump have to do with this? Fuck Forrest Gump and his box of fattening fucking chocolates about what life is and this and that. Life is not a box of fucking chocolates. Life is like a video game. Life is a video game. You play, you get some experience, you need to level the fuck up. You need to level up in life. As you improve yourself and work on your own personal development, you know, maybe you lost some weight. You got in better shape. You started eating healthier. You know, you started going to, going to sleep earlier. You started waking up earlier. You stopped wasting your time on weekends hanging out with a bunch of drunk fucking losers eating double bacon fucking cheeseburger nachos or whatever the fuck they order at the Super Bowl. You, you stopped doing all that. You know, use your weekend and especially your Sunday as a fucking weapon. Don't waste it. Don't waste your weekend. Don't waste your fucking Sundays surrounding yourself with those freaking people. How, how you spend your weekend... And who you spend your weekend with, especially your Sunday, will dictate how your Monday goes. And your Monday will dictate your week, and that's going to dictate your freaking life. Use those weekends and those Sundays to rest mentally, physically, psychologically. Get some shit done. Make some shit happen. Do some shit that makes you freaking happy. And, you know, at different stages of your life, you just need to level the fuck up is what you need to do. You've, you've 
you have bettered yourself. You've taken your health and fitness to another level. Maybe you've taken your career to another level, your business to another level. You're, you're becoming a better version of yourself. You're taking your whole life and your whole lifestyle and your, and your fucking attitude to another level. You need to surround yourself with people that understand that and can, and can relate to your fucking current level up here that you're at. Like you hear people saying, you know, when a rapper, there's rappers out there, right? Sure, they grew up in the ghetto. They grew up selling drugs and maybe poor and robbing people and shit. But you know what? Then they, then they get successful. They bust their fucking ass you know, writing and doing all this stuff and making music and they get, they, they hit it. They, they, they have some hits, they get rich. And then people out there in their own neighborhoods, like, oh, he's fake. He's fake. He doesn't ever, he won't ever come through the hood anymore and all this bullshit. No shit, dipshit. Why the fuck is he going to come back through there and hang out with you miserable fucks sitting on the street corner, getting fucking high for no reason when you ain't doing shit. He leveled the fuck up. Why would he come down there and do that and waste his fucking time, waste his life and his fucking Waste his freedom to go hang out because, oh, he's not real. He leveled the fuck up is what he did. Every time you reach a new level level in your health, in your family, in your career, in business, whatever the fuck it is, there will always be casualties of war that you must just let go of and let them go and leave them behind in their own fucking misery. If they don't want to step up their game and jump those levels with you, They got to fucking go is what they got to do. Those fucking friends, those smiling fake ass fucking friends or whoever the fuck they are, got to go. I'm not saying that you're better than anyone or that you think you're better than anyone or you think that you're above someone. I'm just saying you are at a different stage in your life and you're no longer on that fucking level and you need to live your own life, not some shitty, sabotaging fucking deadbeats that just want you to come and hang out. You know, you're not the same anymore. You don't really, you don't hang out anymore, all this other bullshit. You need to control your freaking life. You need to to be a control freak. And you have the power to to control your life and to control all this. It's simple. Who you associate yourself with. Be a control freak. Everyone says, oh, you're a control freak. Don't be a control freak like it's a bad thing. Fuck that. Control freak. Being a control freak is a good thing. Control who you hang around. And that's going to help you control your thoughts, which is going to help you control your beliefs and develop your beliefs, which is going to help you control and take massive fucking action in the positive direction and control reaching your goals and your vision and your fucking dreams and total fucking domination. That's what it's going to do. Be a control freak. There's nothing wrong with a control freak. Control your time. Control your fucking mind and, and, and your fucking life. There's nothing worse than wasting someone's time or wasting someone's mind. Nothing worse than that. It doesn't get any worse because you're never going to get that shit back. You cannot get it back. Do things on your terms. Do things that make you happy. Carve out your path to your own destiny in line with your goals and your vision. Not in line with your five fucking drunk idiot friends who just want to sit around on a Sunday night watching some stupid football game, wearing their jerseys, getting wasted, eating a bunch of shit, all while talking shit to you about, oh, you've changed. You're not as fun as you used to be. You never go out anymore. You're just a loser. You just stay home all the time. You just work too much. You do this and that. You go to the gym too much. You think you're better than everyone else. Fuck you. Okay there, friend. Keep smiling in my face while I go continue being fucking awesome. And by the way, wipe that fucking nacho cheese off your chin, you fucking slob. My happiness is me living life on my terms, walking to the beat of my own motherfucking drum and and trying to become the person that that my kids not only will look up to, but want to be exactly like. If I have to skip a fucking beer or skip out on chicken wings or skip out on weekends or Sundays or if I have to skip out on the fucking stupid ass Super Bowl or if I even have to skip out on some fucking friends, that is completely fine by me. Don't waste my time. Don't waste my fucking mind. Level the fuck up. All right, you guys get me all fucking worked up. It's pretty It's pretty fucking crazy when you're learning about smiles and friends and happiness from me. If you're learning that shit from me, you probably hit rock bottom, but that's a whole nother story. All right, recap this. Here's a recap. You want to know what we're talking about here today? It's simple. It's simple. The recap of today is so simple. I'm going to break it down for you. This is like going to be the fucking words of wisdom you can live your life by. This is like some deep, deep shit on a whole nother level. Here we go. Fuck smiling. Fuck friends. Fuck the Super Bowl. Fuck people. Control your thoughts. Take massive motherfucking action. Protect your time. Protect your mind. Be fucking happy. Level up and fucking dominate. That is it. That's all it takes. That is what happiness is. So fucking simple. That's it. If you have any questions or you just want to tell me to shut the fuck up, go right ahead. Get in line with all the rest of them. All those fucking smilers. Fuck that. I'll talk to you later. No excuses.